Good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening. How are you today? Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Fine. Thanks. That's nice to hear that. How was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend? Did you enjoy it? It was so tired, teacher. Tired? Did you work? Or maybe at home? A lot of things to do. Um, yes, teacher, I work. Saturday and Sunday? So no weekend then. So you had to work the two days, no rest at all. You didn't rest at all. No descanso nada entonces. Well, and the rest of you, how was your weekend? Did you work too? Or you stayed at home, you watched movies. What did I, you do? I did um, exercise on weekend teacher. Oh, all right, excellent. That's nice to hear that. And the rest of you? Did you cook uh, anything special? Yes, teacher, I cooking. What did you cook? Pasta, pasta, teacher. Pasta, hmm. nice. All right, un corazoncito les iba a mandar, miren. Es que han escrito dos. <laughs> que Oscar no se va a conectar y I don't know who's hola. Okay, bueno. Okay, gracias a los que pues se han conectado temprano y pues qué bueno que no han tenido inconvenientes porque pues vamos con un tema que eh, nos estamos familiarizando con esto, con el simple past. Entonces hay bastante que estudiar todavía. Así que lo vamos a hacer y ya pues ya faltan poquitos días, así es que el último esfuerzo, ¿verdad? Vamos a, a comenzar entonces, déjenme compartir pantalla y pues espero que se unan más personas. So, hay dos que ya comunicaron que tienen eh, problemas, pero pues, a ver. Ok, vamos a partir el... La semana pasada nos quedamos acá, completamos este ejercicio, estuvimos haciendo affirmative and negative statements in simple past with regular verbs. Y preguntaban por ahí con la pronunciación, ¿verdad? Porque estuvimos uh, haciendo un poco de énfasis en que son tres sonidos diferentes. La pronunciación de estos verbos regulares en pasado simple. Entonces vamos a, a ver el video donde se nos explica este cartelito y cuándo es que los sonidos finales son eh, cuál de estos tres. Vamos a ir a la plataforma y luego pues hacemos un repaso de esto. Hi everyone, in this class you'll learn to sound natural when pronouncing simple past verbs. The ED ending of simple past verbs has three different sounds. Let's listen and practice. These verbs end in t, worked, watched. These verbs end in d, cleaned, stayed. These verbs end in id. Invited. Visited. 
in order to understand when we'll have a T, D, or it sound, we need to understand a couple of concepts. Voiceless and voice sound. So let me explain that. I would like for you to pay attention to my throat and my fingers. I'm going to put two fingers on my throat, particularly on my Adam's apple. I would like for you to do the same as well. Now, I would like for you to repeat after me. Watch, turn, watch, turn, watch, turn, watch, turn. Whenever we pronounce the verb watch, there is no vibration on our Adam's apple. This is called a voiceless sound. However, whenever we pronounce the verb turn, there is lots of vibration on my Adam's apple. This is called a boy's sound. Now let's try to understand the it sound. We will pronounce it whenever we have verbs that have a T and a D sound. For example, visit has a T sound. So we pronounce the past as visited. Len has D sound. So we pronounce the past as landed. Let me show you more examples of words that are voiceless and voice to help you understand this topic better. Another method to use is following this particular sounds. These sounds are voiceless. P, K, S, H, C, H, G, H, T, H, S, S, C, X. Let's pronounce these words now. I would like for you to repeat them after me. Helped, looked, washed, watched, laughed, breathed, kissed, danced, fixed. The following consonants have boys sound. L, N, R, G, V, S, W, Y, Z. Let's pronounce these words now. I would like for you to repeat them after me. Called, cleaned, offered, damaged, loved, used, followed, enjoyed, amazed. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to pronounce all of these verbs and then record yourself using the website bookaroo.com. After you finish this activity, share the link of the recording on our discussion forums. Ok, eh, ya que vimos el video acá, ¿hay alguna pregunta o algo que no quedó muy claro sobre esto? Everything ok with the video? ¿Todo bien con el video? Bueno, básicamente se explicaba cómo um, los, los verbos eh, que terminan en consonante T o D. La pronunciación final en pasado va a ser it. Por ejemplo, want es un verbo que termina en T. La pronunciación en pasado sería wanted. Need termina en D. Sería needed. Okay? So, siempre que un verbo termine en T o en D, la pronunciación final va a ser it. En simple past. Now, eh, 
con respecto a lo que es voiceless and voiced, nos explicaba eh, la, la, so, los verbos que terminan en estas consonantes son voiceless. ¿Cómo saber voiceless? Pronuncia el verbo en presente y tocando acá, help. So, siente la manzanita, no tiembla, no hay mucha vibración, casi es, es no se pe percibe. Pero si pronunciamos el verbo call y tocamos aquí call, call, si hay mm, vibración, entonces eso es voiced. Cuando son voiced, el sonido final es the sound. ¿Los demás sí me pueden escuchar? Yes, I yes. hear you. Ah, ok. Yes. Oh, entonces es solo ir al micro. Yes. Sí, lo escuchamos. Ok, bien. Entonces, uh, bueno, y Dalmir dice que no escucha. Ok, um, tenemos este ejercicio acá eh, en el que vamos a escuchar eh, y practicar la pronunciación del id. Entonces vamos a escuchar estos seis verbos y luego pues explico lo demás del ejercicio. Esto lo tienen en su presentación. Vamos a ir al audio para escucharlo. Ok, here we are. Vamos a escuchar primero. Y pueden repetir en casa. Page 93, Exercise 4, Pronunciation. Simple Past ED Endings. Part A. Listen and Practice. Notice the pronunciation of ED. These verbs end in t. Worked. Watched. These verbs end in d. Cleaned. Stayed. These verbs end in id. Invited. Visited. Bien, el ejercicio que les mencionaba es en la parte B tenemos seis verbos. Eh, son dos en cada cuadrito de estos. Eh, si no tienen impreso el material, lo pueden hacer en, en, en su cuaderno. Solamente escribir el T, D, ID. Y debajo de cada uno de estos sonidos vamos a escribir los dos verbos que corresponden a cada sonido. Vamos a escuchar y les voy a poner el audio unas dos veces para que ustedes puedan clasificarlo bajo de cuál um, sonido estarían siendo Work. Work. Eh, que aplican, ¿verdad? Work. ¿Está clara la indicación? Work. Work. Yes, teacher. Ok, ahorita les pongo la. Yes. Cleaning, style, inviting. Inviting. Page 93, exercise 4, part B. Listen and write these verbs under the correct sounds. Cooked. Exercised. Listened. Needed. Needed. 
Shopped. Waited. Once again. Page 93, Exercise 4, Part B. Listen and write these verbs under the correct sounds. Cooked. Exercised. Li listened. Needed. Shopped. Waited. ¿Está bien? ¿Lo completaron? ¿O quisieran escuchar una vez más? One more. One more time. Ok. Page 93. Exercise 4, Part B. Listen and write these verbs under the correct sounds. Cooked. Exercised. Listened. Needed. Shopped. Waited. Okay, there you go. Now let's check your responses. Vamos a chequear sus respuestas. Déjenme ponerles ahí el cartelito. Bueno, así debía quedar completo. En la primera columna, que es los T sounds, should be cooked and shopped. Then in the D column, exercised and listened. And in the last one, needed and waited. Were your answers correct? ¿Estaban correctas sus respuestas? ¿Les quedó así más o menos la mitad? No. No. Más o menos. Yes, teacher. Solo una, me equivoqué. Excelente. Bueno, esto no es solo un ejercicio como para ir, eh, pues, a, um, acostumbrarnos más el oído a estos sonidos. A, no es algo como que, ay, no, la regla no puedo. So, si solo se, si todos están bien, excelente. Si solo uno está mal, pues igual, muy bueno. Si solo la mitad puso bien <ríe> o si se perdió definitivamente, no se preocupe, es cuestión de práctica. Y creo que apenas están como familiarizándose con este tema, ¿verdad? Creo que no lo habían visto anteriormente. Pero pues con la práctica ya se va haciendo un poquito más fácil de, de identificar. Ya se va memorizando uno de los verbos, eh, si son regulares, irregulares, etc. So no worries. Es un pequeño ejercicio adicional de práctica. Um, vamos a ver. Now, um, habíamos discutido las simple past con los regular verbs, oraciones afirmativas y negativas. Ahora vamos a ver eh, simple past siempre en oraciones afirmativas y negativas, pero ahora con irregular verbs, que ya habíamos comentado en la clase anterior, que son los que no siguen una regla de spelling, ¿verdad? Sino que cambian en escritura. Algunos ni siquiera cambian. Solo cambian la pronunciación. Entonces vamos a ver el video y luego pues vamos a profundizar en el tema. Eh. 
Hi everyone, in this class you'll learn to form positive and negative statements using irregular verbs. Let's get started by listening and practicing these statements in the past using irregular verbs. Simple past statements, irregular verbs. I did my homework. I didn't do laundry. You got up at noon. You didn't get up at 10 o'clock. He went to the museum. He didn't go to the library. We met our classmates. We didn't meet our teacher. You came home late. You didn't come home early. They had a picnic. They didn't have a party. In English, we have two types of verbs. In our last class, we learned how to use regular verbs and learned the simple rule of adding ed to change those verbs to the past tense. We also have irregular verbs, which are more complicated because there really isn't a particular rule to follow. You will need to learn them and memorize them. To form positive statements in the past using irregular verbs, we will follow the same formula as with forming positive statements with regular verbs. Subject plus verb in the past tense plus complement. On this chart, you can see a few examples. If you notice, the positive statements have the verbs in the past tense. And the negative statements have the verbs in the present tense. For example, the past of the verb do is did, get up, the past is got up, go, the past is went, meet, the past is met, come, the past is came, have, the past is had. Let's analyze the first example. I did my homework. First we add the subject I. Then we include the verb in the past tense, did. Finally we add a complement, homework. To form negative statements, we will follow this formula. Subject plus didn't the auxiliary didn't, plus verb in the present, plus complement. I didn't do laundry. First, we add the subject I. Then, we add the auxiliary verb to form negative statements in the past. Didn't. After that, we add the verb in the present. Do. Finally, we add the complement, laundry. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to make positive and negative statements using these irregular verbs. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Ok, acá tenemos eh, lo que acaban de ver en la plataforma. Simple past statements with irregular verbs. Como vieron, pues esto cambia su, um, un, eh, a diferencia de los regulares que siguen una regla, ¿verdad? Entonces, esos son un poco más complicados, como ya pudieron ver, porque pues no hay una regla que seguir, solamente lo, lo podemos memorizar. Eh, la estructura es la misma. Eh, lo único que sí siguen ambos en común es de que, por ejemplo, si van a hacer una oración afirmativa, el verbo pues eh, va en pasado. Por ejemplo, acá tenemos y la estructura es la misma sujeto, verbo, complemento. Y si va a hacer oración negativa, entonces aplica la misma regla que con los regulares, ¿verdad? Que si es una oración negativa, usamos el auxiliar didn't, pues did not, and, y el verbo va a ir en presente. 
el verbo ya no se cambia porque pues estamos haciendo uso del auxiliar did, did not. Entonces por eso el verbo queda en presente porque ya el auxiliar me está indicando que la estamos hablando de algo en pasado. Y lo mismo sucede con las preguntas. Ya vamos a ver eso más adelante. Y aquí si se fijan en los ejemplos que teníamos en la plataforma, tenemos acá en la oración afirmativa, you got up at noon. Y en la negativa, you didn't get up at ten. El verbo es get up, en presente, pasado, got up. Do, pasado, did. Go, pasado, went. Meet, uh, present is met. Come, came. And uh, have, in past, is had. Y el ejercicio que se recomienda es que hagan oraciones utilizando estos verbos, como para que se nos vayan, eh, se nos vayan quedando más eh, there are more irregular verbs. Sí, sí hay más, Manuel. De hecho, yo les mandé una listita de verbos por ahí, que es esta que está acá. Y de esta lista es el audio que les mandé antes de la clase para que ustedes lo practiquen. Eh, estos son los más comunes. Sí hay más, pero estos son como 64. Que ya con estos tendríamos bastante que hacer, ¿verdad? Para practicar y ponernos a, a memorizarlos. Porque no hay otra manera con estos eh, verbos. Más que memorizándolos. Entonces el ejercicio es que hagan oraciones afirmativas. Y util, eh, utilizando los verbos que tienen en el ejercicio anterior. Quiero ver cuáles son. Um, Podemos usar uh, did, got up, went, eh, had, came, met y hacer oraciones. Por ejemplo, uh, para no limitarlo también podemos usar cualquiera de estos de los de la lista. O pues dependiendo, ¿verdad? Si quieren uh, como enfocarse en lo que hicieron o no hicieron el fin de semana, podrían hacer... Um, I, por ejemplo, ¿qué hice? I cooked. Entonces pongo, yo cociné. I cooked. Uh, what did I cook? I don't remember. I think that meat. Uh, yes, cociné carne. I cooked meat. Ok, so estoy usando el verbo en pasado porque esta es una oración afirmativa. ¿Qué no hice? I did. Entonces, no trabajé. I didn't work. Ok. So, I used the auxiliary, did not, and then the verb in present. Entonces, les voy a dejar un tiempo para que hagan sus oraciones. Al menos cinco oraciones afirmativas y cinco negativas. Eh, pueden usar verbos irregulares de preferencia para que este, empecemos ya con esto de memorizarnos, ¿verdad? Porque es la única manera y la mejor es con la práctica. Que le puede dar tiempo para que escriban sus oraciones en el cuaderno y luego pues podrán compartir lo que han escrito.
finished. Have you finished? Yes. Yes, I finished. Okay, volunteer to share your work? Me. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. I didn't study on Sunday. I go up late on Saturday. He went to the beach. I ran on weekend. He didn't exercise on weekend. Excellent job. Thank you so much for sharing. Lara? Okay. I didn't sleep and now I got up early. I went to the office the last weekend. I didn't go to the beach. I came to the school early. I didn't to school late. I didn't eat vegetable yesterday. I ate meat yesterday. You did a very good job. Thank you so much for sharing, Laura. Any other volunteer? Alguien más que quiera compartir sus oraciones? Uh, mm -hmm. Elsie? Thank you. Okay. I wrote a letter for my sister. I made a report. I ate a hamburger for my lunch. I didn't know. I didn't take a bath. I walked. And I didn't eat pizza because I didn't have money. <laughs> <laughs> but you ate a hamburger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's okay. nice. And from where Thank was you. the hamburger? <laughs> was it from Wendy's, McDonald's? Was a homemade hamburger? Um, my favorite is McDonald's on Big uh -huh. Mac. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nice. Thank you so Thank much you. for sharing. And the rest of You're you, any welcome. other volunteer? <laughs> any other volunteer? Alguien más que quiera compartir su trabajo? Me too. Okay, thank you so much. I ate mariscos. Okay, I, seafood. I cut my hair. My hair with my mom. I did. I didn't go to the. I didn't go to the church the weekend. And I bought a cell phone. Oh, you didn't. Oh, you had an amazing weekend then. <laughs> Good job. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, now, let's see, is there any other volunteer? I don't want to lift anybody behind. If not, we continue. Okay, so we're going to continue. Now, the next exercise is to complete the chart and with the present, tenemos ahí los verbos and simple past. Todos son irregulares. Ahí están en pasado. Hay que escribir el presente. Eh, lo pueden hacer en su cuadernito, le voy a dar tiempo para que completen ese, ese cartelito con los verbos en presente y luego chequeamos su trabajo.
finished? Yes, teacher. Okay, um, we're going to check your work. Let's see. Is in the next. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, let's check. Okay, here we have the chart. Just let me put it uh, here in front. Okay, so we got the buy in present as it's here. Past is bought. Bought. And then here it's eight. Eight. The past and the present it then we have here is feel the yeah. past is felt then we have in this space it should be make where the past is made and here with the verb read and presente se pronuncia read en pasado se escribe igualito pero se pronuncia como el color red then we have ride here in the past is road. In present is see, the past is so. Present is sit, past is sat, then we have take, and the past is took. So let me play the audio. Voy a, voy a poner el audio de los verbos para que ustedes puedan escuchar y repetir en casa. Pero voy a dejar el cartelito aquí donde están completos. Okay. Page 94, exercise five, part A. Complete the chart, then listen and check. Buy, bought. Eat, ate. Feel, felt. Make, made. Read, read. Ride, rode. See, saw. Sit, sat. Take, took. All right, so this is, uh, hasta aquí llegaríamos con las affirmative and negative statements with regular and irregular verbs. Y ahora pues pasaríamos a ver Ya lo que son las preguntas. Vamos a ver el video, practicar un poco. Sure. Sí. Uh, for ver uh, the read in pass, uh, two options. No. Solo está. No son dos opciones, es solo. Eh, lo que le decía, pues acá voy a poner el cartelito. Bueno, se escribe igual. Veamos. Si lo miras acá, acá está. Present, read y el pasado se escribe igual. Pero está esto acá indicando la pronunciación. Este es un símbolo fonético. Entonces uh, se escribe igual, pero se pronuncia diferente. Eh, en presente se pronuncia read y en pasado se pronuncia read. Uh -huh. okay, Muy buena observación. Ese es el símbolo fonético por la pronunciación que es read. Uh -huh. Thanks, teacher. Ok, que de esta lista es el único que se escribe igual en, en, en ambos tiempos, pero solo cambia la pronunciación. Ok. Vamos entonces a ver el video para pasar allá a hacer lo que serían las simple past questions. Okay. 
yes, no questions. Let's see. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn to ask and answer simple past yes or no questions. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, Did You Like It? Let's listen and practice. Did you like it? So, did you go anywhere last summer? Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona. We saw the Grand Canyon. Really? Did you like it? Oh, yes, we loved it. Did you go hiking there? No, we didn't. Actually, we rode horses. And we also went whitewater rafting on the Colorado River. Wow! Did you have fun? Yes, we did. We had a great time. Let's take a look at the questions on this chart. Simple past yes-no questions. Did you have a good summer? Yes, I did. I had a great summer. Did you play volleyball? No, I didn't. I played tennis. Did Erica like her vacation? Yes, she did. She liked it a lot. Did Erica and her sister go to Colorado? No, they didn't. They went to Arizona. In order to form simple past yes or no questions, we can follow this formula. Auxiliary did plus subject plus the verb in the present plus complement. Let's analyze a couple of questions. Did you have a good summer? First, we will add the auxiliary verb did. Next, we need to include the subject, you. After that, we will add the verb in the present tense, have. I would like to point out that the verb doesn't change to the past because we are using the auxiliary verb did. Finally, we add a complement and a question mark. A good summer. To answer this question, we can answer either positively by saying, yes, I did, or negatively by saying, no, I didn't. In our example, we can see that the question was answered positively, yes, I did, then extra information is given, I had a great summer. Notice that the verb now changed to the past tense, have turned into had. Let's analyze one more question. I'll choose the last one on this chart. Did Erica and her sister go to Colorado? First, we'll add the auxiliary did. Next, we need to include the subject, Erica and her sister. After that, we will add the verb in the present tense, go. I would like to point out that the verb doesn't change to the past because we are using the auxiliary did. Finally, we add a complement and a question mark to Colorado. To answer this question, we can answer either positively by saying, yes, they did, or negatively by saying, no, they didn't. In our example, we can see that it is answered by saying, no, they didn't. Then extra information is given. They went to Arizona. Notice that the verb now changed to the past tense. Go turned into went. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to think about your last vacation and practice making questions and answers about it. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Bien, lo primero que vamos a hacer antes de ir al tema de lo que son las um, preguntas, eh, vamos a practicar primero la conversación. Voy a, esa la compartí en el chat porque me hacía falta en la, 
en la diapositiva, pero pues ya la agregué y también se las mandé al WhatsApp. Vamos a practicar pronunciación y luego lo vamos a hacer en grupos. Aquí está. Page 95, Exercise 7, Conversation. Did you like it? Listen and practice. So, did you go anywhere last summer, Erica? Yes. Summer, Erica? Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona. We saw the Grand Canyon. Really? Did you like it? Oh, yes, we loved it. Did you go hiking? No, we didn't. Actually, we rode horses, and one day we went whitewater rafting on the Colorado River. Wow! Did you have fun? Yes, I did. But my sister didn't like the rafting very much. Okay. Questions? Preguntas antes de que vayamos a practicar en los breakout rooms? No hay preguntas entonces. No, teacher. Ok. Vamos entonces a formar los breakout rooms para que puedan practicar. Eh, ok, Henry pregunta hiking. Hiking es eh, lo que le llaman senderismo. Las personas que se van a hacer caminatas como por montaña. Hiking, senderismo. Any other question? No, teacher. Okay. You're welcome, Henry. Vamos a hacer los breakout rooms para que puedan practicar la conversación. Como les repito, se las mandé al WhatsApp en un screenshot antes de, antes de la clase. No, I can't. yo no estoy en la computadora actualmente. ¿Alguien más que pueda? Mm. Wait, wait, wait. Mm. Pero todos los tenemos en el teléfono. Este. Hagamos Vamos, desde ahí podemos, ¿ok? Bueno, este, si, si gustan comienzo. Con usted, si quiere. Ah, Karen lo está compartiendo. Ah, thank you, Karen. Ok. Uh, I am Laura, ok? Ok. Ok. 
Uh, so did you go anywhere last summer, Erica? Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona. We saw the Grand Canyon. Really? Did you like it? Oh, yes. We love it. Um, did you go hiking? No, we did actually we rode horses and one day we went white water rafting on the Colorado River. Wow, did you have fun? Yes, I did, but my sister didn't like the rafting very much. Okay, change. I am Erica. Okay. Uh, so, did you go anywhere last summer, Erica? Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona. We saw the Grand Canyon. Really? Did you like it? Oh, yes. We love it. Did you go hiking? No, we didn't. Uh, actually, we rode horses. And one day we went white water rafting on the Colorado River. Whoa, did you have fun? Yes, I did. But my sister didn't like the rafting very much. Thank you. Okay, Thank okay you. next. You're welcome. Next. Thank you. Me. Me. Okay. I Laura. America. Okay. So did you go did you go anywhere last summer, Erica? Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona. We saw the Grand Canyon. Really? Did you like it? Oh yes, we love it. Did you go hiking? No, we didn't. Actually, we rode horses. And one day we went white water rafting on the Colorado River. Wow, did you have fun? Yes, I did. But my sister didn't like the rafting very much. Okay, Shane's. So, did you go anywhere last summer, Erika? Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona. We saw the Grand Canyon. Really? Do you like it? Oh, yes, we love it. Did you go hiking? No, we didn't. Actually, we rode, we rode, rode horse. And one day we went white water rafting on the Colorado River. Whoa, did you have fun? Yes, I did. But my sister didn't like the rafting very much. Okay. Rafting very much. Rosa and, and okay. Um, sorry. <coughs> yes. Uh, so did you go anywhere last summer, Erica? Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona. We say the Grand Canyon. Really? Do you like it? Oh yes. We love it. Did you go hiking? No, we didn't. Actually, we rode horse. And one day we went white water rafting on the Colorado River. Uh, did you have food? Yes, I did. But my sister didn't like 
the rafting very much. Okay. Eh, si gusta, continuamos. O oh, creo que ya no hay tiempo. <risa> oh, creo que es aquí. ¿Qué haría, Mugro? Bien, eh, pude entrar a un par de rooms a escuchar. Está muy bien con la pronunciación. Los felicito. Solo estuve en dos. Me faltó visitar dos. Pero los estuve escuchando. Hicieron un muy buen trabajo. Lo único, tal vez con más práctica, es um, un poco más fluido. De ahí, nada más. Nos quedaríamos aquí por ahora y ya mañana entraríamos a ver ya el topic de las preguntas. Ya la práctica gramatical. Y pues descansen and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. See you tomorrow. Good night. 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 Good night